Where do our morals come from? What is morality and what are morals about? It's about what ought to be done, about what's right and wrong, about duties and rights, not about what is, but about what should be. So morality is about duties and rights. Duties are about what you owe to others and rights are what others owe to you. It's important to realize that morals are unconditional. Some rules are conditional. If you want Y, do X. But in morality, you have to do X, no matter what. There is no if condition. If you want to excel, you must practice. So the left side is not what morality is about. Morality is not a set of conditional rules. I keep maintaining that morals are unconditional. So don't say good is what creates more happiness for more people, for that is a conditional one. If you want more happiness, do this. That's called utilitarianism or hedonism, maximizing happiness and minimizing suffering. So the main source is John Stuart Mill, long ago. I think Immanuel Kant is a much better approach. He finds that too conditional and too subjective. It's irrelevant for people who want to maximize only what is good for themselves. So for that reason he rejects the left side. And I would like to follow him. John Stuart Mill would say that all morals and rules in morality are relative, subjective, conditional, negotiable. Kant would say they are absolute, objective, unconditional non-disposable. They are ends in themselves, not means to other ends. Let's make a comparison. Rationality deals with what is true and what is false, whereas morality deals with what is right and what is wrong. Rationality is in search of universal and eternal scientific laws. So why would morality not be something similar? It's in search of universal and eternal moral laws. With rationality, we may be oblivious to laws we do not know yet. A century ago, we didn't know as many laws as we do now. Something similar holds for morality. We may violate moral laws that we were never aware of. So let us realize that morals are non-quantifiable entities. They cannot be weighed like monetary values can. They cannot be counted or measured. They do not depend on what brings the most happiness or whatever. They do not depend on non-moral properties, and we can never define them in non-moral terms. They are not quantifiable, so we cannot measure them on a, on a meter. The life of a handicapped person is not worth less than that of a Hall of Famer. The life of an unborn baby has no lesser value than the life of a toddler. The life of a prisoner has no lesser value than the life of those outside the prison. Morals are non-quantifiable entities. Some might say, yes, but moral values change. They change over time. I would say it's not the values that change, but our moral evaluations. They do change over time. Some say moral values are determined by culture. My response would be, our moral evaluations have a cultural component. To have moral values is a matter of being valued according to the left side. I would say being valued does not create moral values. What happened in Nazi Germany did not create moral values. It changed evaluations enormously with all the consequences we know. Let's take a, a simple case study, slavery. A few centuries ago, slavery was not evaluated as morally wrong. Did our moral values change? No, our evaluations did. In the past, most people evaluated slavery as morally right. But we have learned now that that was wrong. There is a value of personal freedom and human dignity, a universal value, whether we like it or not. But some people were blind for that value. 
Morality is about what should be and not about what is. Morals tells us what the world is like, is what some people say. I would say no, it tells us what the world should be like. And don't equate them. What is does not tell us what should be. The fact that something is a certain way doesn't mean that it ought to be that way. Morals cannot be reduced to being genetic or functional, more developed, better for or voted by the majority. They are not the same. The fact that diseases are natural in a biological sense does not make them good in a moral sense. Survival of the fittest may be natural in nature, but that doesn't mean we have to enforce it morally. That some people are richer than others, more intelligent, does not mean we ought to value them differently. The fact that human beings are different does not mean that they ought to be treated differently. I think Abraham Lincoln couldn't have said it better. He said, if you think that you can enslave someone who has a darker skin, if that's the rule, you are to be slave to the first person you meet with a fairer skin than your own. Or if you think that there is intellectual superiority, if that's your rule, you are to be slave for the first man you meet with an intellectual intellect superior to your own. In other words, descriptive criteria are morally irrelevant. They cannot be validated in morality by using relative descriptive criteria. The moral value of human life cannot be based on biological standards such as age, viability, fatality or brain volume. Morals are not up for grabs. We cannot create them. We are not free to choose our own moral values. There is no pro-choice in morals. Morals tell us what ought to be done, whether you like it or not. The left side says good is what is good for me. The right side says good is good for the common good. We don't make our own moral laws for what we deem right. Just as there is color blindness, there is also value blindness. Certain people don't see the values. We don't invent our own values. Moral laws are intrinsically right, even when we do not see yet that they are. Abraham Lincoln again challenged the Nebraska Bill in 1820 that we could decide if slavery is legal or not. He said God did not place good and evil before us, telling us to make a choice. C.S. Lewis put it well also. The human mind has no more power of inventing a new moral value than of imagining a new primary color. If morals were up for grabs, that would be the philosophy of the serpent in paradise. You will be like God, knowing both good and evil. They are not a product of evolution. They are not inborn, not genetic, not products of natural selection. We don't have a moral compass built into our brain. Moral laws tell us to do what our genes do not make us do by nature. Otherwise we wouldn't need moral laws if genes would tell us what to do. And besides, the offenders of moral laws reproduce much better than their victims. Whether they are killers or promiscuous people, they would do much better. So it is not a product of evolution or natural selection. They don't have any survival value and cannot be promoted by natural selection. We are not moral by nature. They are not a product of evolution. Reality tells us that too many people are willing to break a moral rule when they can get away with it. The missing parent, the adulterous woman, the murderer. Morals do not come from the animal world either. Animals live in a world of what is, not of what ought to be. If animals had morals, predators would have a rough life. Grizzly bears that, haul, that maul hikers won't be hauled into court, for they are not responsible for their actions. And animals that act caringly follow their instinct or training, not a moral code. Dogs have that instinct, cats don't. 
And don't think that morals are the product of legislation. Our government doesn't give us morals. We have morals. And let's hope the legislation will follow those morals. As Martin Luther King said so well, an unjust legal law is a code that is out of harmony with the moral law. Legislation was very often not in line with the morals it should have followed. Morality gives us rights and duties, legislation only gives us entitlements. Don't confuse them. The Nuremberg trials after World War II were only justified by an appeal to a higher law from above. So where do our morals come from? Not from our genes, evolution, legislation or anything useful, etc. The only authority that can obligate me is someone infinitely superior to me. We usually call that our conscience. That's what we were given from above. No one else has the right to demand my absolute obedience. Without an eternal heaven, there could be be no absolute or objective standards of right and wrong. Even the makers of the Declaration of Independence realized that, when they said we hold these truths to be self-evident, that we are all created equal, endowed by our Creator. Human rights are not man-made. They are God-given rights and not entitlements. We cannot invent them and manipulate them at will. We need a transcendent authority to sanction and recognize what is right and what is wrong. Dwight Eisenhower puts it well in his inaugural address. It's our faith in the deathless dignity of man, governed by eternal moral and natural laws. John F. Kennedy said something similar. The rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, that would be an entitlement, but from the hand of God. Believe it or not, even atheists realize this. Jean Paul Sartre said, if atheism is true, and for a long time he thought that was true, there can be no absolute or objective standard of right and wrong. For only in eternal heaven there could be values objective and universal. Friedrich Nietzsche, Nietzsche said something similar. Humanism and other moral ideologies shelter themselves in caves and venerate shadows of the God they once believed in. They are mere shadows of the past. Jürgen Habermas, a non-religious person, said, The ideas of freedom and social coexistence are based on the Jewish notion of justice and Christian ethics of love. So where do our rights come from, our morals? God wrote on tables of law what men did not read in their hearts, said St. Augustine. Our rights are the divine birthrights. Without God we would have no right to claim any rights. If they really came from men and not God, they could take them away any time, and they certainly tried. Rights and duties go hand in hand. The duty of self-preservation is also the right to preserve yourself. The right to seek truth is also your duty to seek the truth. The duty to work for justice is also the right to work for justice. The right of religious freedom is also the duty to religious freedom. These and other subjects were discussed extensively in two books I wrote, one published by queenship.org and you can find it on their website, the other one by paragonhouse.com. Uh, you can also go to amazon.com or to the website wheredowecomefrom.com with dashes in between. Just type my name, Gerard Verschuren, and you will find the books I wrote on this issue.